Welcome back. Now, oil prices rose today, driven up by a weakening dollar, but gains were capped by plentiful supplies and inventories, despite an effort by OPEC and other producers to cut output and prop up the market. Now, let's um, discuss more on the global oil market with Adim Okwesa, research analyst with Financial Derivatives Company. Good afternoon, Adim. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, rising U.S. inventories and output seem to be countering efforts by OPEC and other producers, including Russia, to cut supplies by almost 1.8 million uh, barrels per day during the first half of 2017. Should this really be a, a cause for worry now? Well, I think it's too early to lose sleep about that. I think OPEC, there's a good level of compliance about 80 percent. I think that should achieve the goal of reducing global supply by about two percent. So I think it's still so it's, it's still early to worry about rising global. Now Trump's protectionist stance seem to be having impact on um, different sectors. How much has this, you know, affect the global oil market? Well, um, if we, we have to look at Trump's energy plan and his economic policies, the corner, cornerstone of his policies are putting America first and protect, protecting America's interests anywhere in the world. Trump's energy plan is predicated on achieving energy independence and winning the U.S. off imports from OPEC. Um, but this is not the first time um, a president has tried, attempted to achieve energy independence. I think going back as far back as Richard Nixon in the 70s, he have tried to uh, attempt uh, to achieve energy independence, but haven't haven't been successful. But we have to know that America is both an is both an oil exporter and oil importer. So if it wants to achieve energy independence, it has to scale back on exporting, it has to reimpose a ban on lifting, on, on reimpose a ban on exporting oil to the U.S. so it can have sufficient production for domestic consumption. Now, if he tells, you know, goes that way, you know, continues with this style, how much impact would that have on U.S.-Nigeria relationship in terms of oil export? Um, I don't see Nigeria being affected by by the US achieving energy independence because we have to know that Nigeria's crude oil is very attractive number one and last recently I was last year India overtook Nigeria the US as being Nigeria's largest oil importer so I think that if the US steps out and stops importing oil from Nigeria and other OPEC countries Economies like India and other Asian countries will be willing and ready to fill the, the vacuum. So I don't see it as any being any as having any effect on Nigeria's on Nigeria. Now let's look at this um, general plan by uh, Trump to actually boost U.S. production. His plans to revive pipelines. In all of these, who wins and who loses? Well, if he wants to achieve. If he wants to boost production, obviously the shale producers would will be boom to the shale producers, and uh, there's also a risk of that adding supply and offsetting the efforts of OPEC to curtail all supply. So it might have a an, a downward effect on oil prices if energy produ if all U.S. oil production is increased significantly. So. We have to wait and see how that plays out. So going forward, what is your outlook for the global market? Um, I remember the Minister of State Petroleum said he sees oil reaching the mid-60s in, in coming months. But I think I'll rather be con con more conservative than that. I think I see oil being about $59, $60 sometime between now and the and June. Well, let's hope we get to that. <laughs> At least it will be a positive news for Nigeria. Thank you very much for your time, Adim.
Now, South Africa has issued permits to allow total imports of 1.3 million metric tons of genetically modified corn from the U.S. since allowing entry of the grain for the first time in December after the worst drought since records began in 1904. South Africa became a net importer of corn for the first time since 2008 in the marketing season uh, that ended in April after the drought slashed local harvests. Approval was given for the entry both white and yellow GM corn from the U.S. While South Africa grows its own GM corn to date, it hadn't allowed modified grain from the U.S. to be imported as food. Local corn farmers oppose the new imports because they are likely to push prices lower. Ghana's producer price inflation fell sharply to 4.9% year-on-year in December from 11.9% the month before. Ghana's new president, Nana Akufuado, has vowed to create jobs, promote business and fight corruption. The government also inherits a $918 million international monetary fund deal that aims to reduce debt, the budget deficit and inflation. And finally on the program, Tanzania hopes to reach an agreement with international oil companies in 2018, paving the way for the construction of a liquefied natural gas plant, part of a bigger plan for a new export terminal. The planned new infrastructure will enable Tanzania to export some of the huge offshore gas reserves discovered in recent years in a region that has turned into a hydrocarbon exploration hotspot. BG Group, recently acquired by Royal Dutch Shell, together with Statoil, ExxonMobil, and Offer Energy, plan to build a $30 billion onshore LNG export terminal in partnership with the state-run Tanzania Petroleum Development Corporation. But a final investment decision has been held up by government delays in finalizing issues relating to the acquisition of land at the site and establishing a legal framework for the nascent hydrocarbon industry. And that's it on the program. Thank you very much for being part of it. I'm Chimeze Obi Wagu.